Welcome to the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook uh, meeting of June 20th, 2017. Would you be kind enough to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Um, Steve, I'll put up uh, the agenda here for the folks at home if they want to take a look at what we'll be discussing tonight. The order is going to change, I think, a little bit. Item number two, um, we have someone from DEC who will be joining us, a member of the estuary program, to answer some questions. So that may happen a little later in the meeting. Okay, very good. Well, we will start this first meeting of the month, as we always do, with the supervisor's report. And I will uh, read that to you. This is the uh, monthly financial statement ending May 31st, 2017. We started the month with an opening balance of six million fifty-one thousand four hundred eighteen and six cents. We had receipts of seven hundred and five thousand two hundred and sixty-four and ninety-one cents. Disbursements of six hundred ninety-nine thousand one hundred and five dollars and seventy-one cents. That leaves us an ending balance of six million forty-seven thousand. Five hundred and seventy-seven dollars. And Ann Conway, our bookkeeper, has also included a few minor budget adjustments. Only a couple um, for a contingent account. And we received some extreme weather uh, monies from the state. EWR funds, Nicole. Are there any questions about the supervisor's report? Harry, I know you always want to hear what we have in our CPF balance. Yeah, you can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's often on the first page. The CM Community Preservation. See that line? That's nearly the last line on the first page. On the first page. CM Community Preservation 204. Oh, yes, okay. Right, so we have an ending balance of $808,331 in that account. So I would entertain a motion if there are no questions or further questions um, to approve the supervisor's report. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you very much. And for the budget adjustments as well, is there a motion to approve those? So moved. Okay. A second. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, it's time for the clerk's report. Sue McCann. Town Clerk Monthly Report, May of 2017. Total local shares remitted to supervisor as town revenue, $1,590.46. Amount remitted to New York Ag and Markets for the spade and neuter program, $46. Amount paid to New York State Department of Health for marriage licenses, $180. Amount remitted to New York State Environmental Conservation, $359.04 for total state, county, and local revenue of $2,175.50. Pursuant to Section 27, Sub 1 of the Town and Law, I hereby certify that foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, Town Clerk of the Town of Red Hook, during the period stated above in connection with my office. I also have um, two abstracts. Okay. One is from March of 2017. This is for vouchers 21673, 
and through 21759. These are the vouchers that were approved and processed for the month of March. And the total abstract was $428,611.30. And I hereby certify that the voucher numbers processed in the month of March are an accurate reporting of the abstract approved for payment by the town board. We also have April's. And this is vouchers 21760 through 21957, uh, with a total abstract of $314,797.48. And I hereby certify that the vouchers processed in the month of April are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. And that is it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Sue. Is there a motion to accept the clerk's report? So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, announcements. I just have a, a, a couple of quick announcements. Um, one is to let the folks uh, know at home. You've probably seen that uh, the sidewalk project has begun on Route 9 South. That's on the uh, eastern side from Holy Cow up to Town Hall here, in fact, a few feet past Town Hall to include uh, in front of Ryan Beck Savings Bank. The project will continue for the next couple of months, but you will see uh, progress on a daily basis. They've already started to pour uh, the curbs and the portions of the sidewalk, and there will be um, replantings at the end. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to come into Town Hall or give a call. and. We'd be happy to uh, give you any specifics that you need on the project. We also want to let you know um, this uh, change in town hall hours. Uh, July 3rd, Monday, that's the day before Independence Day, we will be closed that day. So if you would like um, to get any type of permits, please uh, see us on Friday or Wednesday after the holiday. Also would like to let you know that our recycling park, we um, now have recycling can uh, containers rather at our recreation park. And so we would greatly appreciate it if you would put your recycling materials and only your recycling materials in those cans. And we have weekly pickup for that. And uh, we thank you in advance for doing your part to uh, keep our community uh, a responsible one. Okay, um, that's all I have for announcements. Does anybody else have anything? I had a quick thing. Um, sure. I just wanted to give a shout out to the Dutchess County Department of Transportation, um, or DPW, I guess it is. They did some brush clearing on the corner of Linden and Maisland for us recently in response to a resident request, and that was something that we forwarded through um, Bob Balkind, and they I think we, the person complained about it one day and it was done the next day. And so that was back in May, but this is my first meeting since that time. So I just wanted to let them know that we really appreciate how quickly they address that issue and let the residents know that if you do see things that you are concerned about, we'll direct it to the appropriate highway department, whether it's our local one or the village or, um, or the county. Okay. Thank you very much, Sarah. Anybody else? Any announcements? Okay, if not, it's that portion of the evening for public comment period. Linda, would you like to make some public comments? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm here again for the Greg APAP uh, business that has started up again. The smoker's going again, and I don't want this facility to run. Uh, your zoning enforcement officer declared that you do not have the ability to have this going as we have no food truck law. We claimed that in February 12, 2015. And you've been working on a law, but it has not been finished. Michelle Gregg just told me that she was asked to work on the law. You did not forward the information to her that I had sent you, the six pages of comments. Now, I want that facility stopped, cease, desist. You have until June 30th. That's it. I'm not playing any games with you anymore. It seems to me that you're all colluding on this issue. I will not have that. 
you will do your job. You're here to enforce the laws. Your lawyer is supposed to give you the ability to do what you're supposed to do. That you do the right thing. You cyst and decease that operation immediately. June 30th is the cutoff point. I've done my job. You do yours. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Anybody else like to make some public comments? Very good. We have our first item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the addition of roads to the town of Red Hook 2017 inventory. Chris, did you want to say a few words about this process? So uh, this is a process that's initiated by the highway superintendent and the Department of Transportation. And uh, Teresa can speak to this, I think, in terms of the technical aspects of what the DOT does. But they are looking to make sure that they do a um, uh, uh, survey right, of all of the roads in the town. And they identify places where they think there are discrepancies between their records and, and uh, what's actually going on on the ground. They're doing GIS, GIS right. and comparing it to what we have on our records. Right. And, and if they come up with shortfalls or overages in the um, length, they bring it to our attention. And if we can add them um, by resolution because we've been maintaining them for over 10 years and they're deeded to us, then that's what we do to adjust so that the figures match um, what DOT is now doing. It's a new uh, technology that they're using, and they just want to make sure that the towns understand that they can increase their mileage or decrease their mileage depending on what the actual um, uh, length of the roads are. So Teresa and I work together on uh, reviewing these roads and the old, either these are roads that have been maintained for many, many years, or they're dedicated roads. In this case, I think these are all roads that were maintained for many, many years. Um, and these are little stubs, you know, 0.2 miles, um, you know, 0.05 miles in one case, little spurs and stubs that weren't on the record before, and so they're proposed to be added to the record for completeness so that their road she's already maintaining. Yep, and okay. have them up would on the screen, those roads. Would you give us more town roads and enable us to get any more help through? Uh... They give it and they take it away. <laughs> um, it'll probably come out to be a wash. There are some roads that were on the inventory that we may have had um, marked as longer, and they're actually shorter the way that they are measuring them. So I think we'll come out to about the same. Um, it is tied to the chips. But what they're saying is they're going through every town in the state, and it's not that you're going to be getting less money, it's just that the money will be appropriated slightly differently after all the facts and figures are in. Okay, well, we thank you both. I know, Chris, you spent an enormous amount of time going through the deeds and to sue your help for, for doing yes. all that thank as you well. So, any uh, questions about uh, these little tangents or stubs? It comes with what, about 1.6 miles or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If there are no questions, it's resolution number 20, dated June <coughs> 6th. 26? Mm -hmm. 26, dated June 20th, 2017, authorizing the addition of roads for the 2017 yearly update of the local highway inventory of roads for the New York State Department of Transportation. Now therefore be it resolved. And I so move. Second. What? Sarah second. Tie goes to Sarah. Okay, any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We're going to skip number two as I mentioned earlier uh, so that Megan Lung from the estuary program can join us. We have uh, item number three our purchasing manager and coordination with our recreation director have identified that we can apply for some additional funding to our town of Red Hook tennis courts, our complete redo project, and uh, we been able to ascertain that we're eligible for up to $20,000. Whether we get it or not, we'll find out after we make this application. All right. And 
put it up on the screen there. Did you, uh, is John here? Oh, there he is. John, did you want to say something about the, the grant application? Well, we'll go through all the requirements. There are, as you know, on that sheet that I gave you, there are a number of requirements. We have to do photographs. We have to have engineering studies. We have to have scope of work. We have to have a two-scale diagram, which we just completed on Monday. Uh, and then all that has to be digitalized and sent to USTA. And that'll be the first step in the process. And then we also have to have programs, which we do, and it has to be open to the public, and we have to have it open for tournaments and other uses. And we have to, in our summer program, we use Quick Start as our instructional program. Youth tennis is the big emphasis, and we would have to probably mark the court for youth tennis as well as a USTA requirement to get the money. So you'd have to have your 30-foot courts as well as your 78s. Okay. And just to update the board and the public, we are at the point where the engineers are now putting together a scope of services for this project, and we should hopefully have that for our next meeting. Um, and we would like to let you know that if the project does move forward this, su this summer, August, two weeks in August, likely the work will be, will be done. We have that window. Well, Can we you have... Since the school district isn't using it, you okay. August till so whatever. Supplies. Okay, they're gonna be with Bard for the fall season then. Okay, good. Any questions about the grant application? All right, we have resolution number twenty-seven up on the magic screen. Whereas the town of Redwood has caused to be prepared an application to the. United States Tennis Association for a grant of $20,000. And that is the maximum amount <coughs> we're eligible for. And I so move. Second. So, oh, there we go. Everybody is quick tonight. Any further discussion? I just want to thank John for um, finding this. And I think this is a really important project. So I'm glad that we're going forward with it and that we have managed to find a bunch of different sources of funding for something that's a pretty significant project. I think it's really great and encouraging for future rec improvements. It's all about the grants, right? The, um, the extra cost to us because of what they require will be more than offset with this grant should we get it, won't it, John? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. For our $100 membership, we've already gotten over 4000 from the USDA in pens and balls and rackets. Okay. Other things, so. Are you recommending we all join, John? <laughs> John, do you know if we, um, I know you said the courts have to be open for things like tournaments. Can we charge for things like that? I know right now we, we don't, I think, charge for use of the facility. Uh, it right? depends on the tournament. Okay. I mean, if it's a profit-making thing, usually they do, but if it's not, yeah. then they don't. So. Like an education thing. Right. Well, we have this resolution. It's uh, we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Well, you heard about uh, the clerk re clerk's report and the supervisor's report earlier. We have annually audits done on the clerk's office, on the uh, obviously the town supervisor's office, the. Justice Courts, and so Lori D Doty, who is our CPA, has conducted the audits for those departments. And we have, okay, so here's the tax collectors. I put the screen up here for the folks at home so you can get some sense of how much money we collect. Approximately seven and a half million dollars, but you notice a good majority of that goes for your Dutchess County taxes, the town taxes, and that includes both uh, the folks who live in villages and those who live outside. The total is just over three million dollars. And these are the audited results. Here's the justice courts. We have two judges. And 
This is the amount of money that is brought in by each of the courts. And the disbursements out of those courts. It's not a large sum of money, but nonetheless, we have it audited. And here's the resolution to approve the audits of tax collector, town clerk, town justice, general fund, and the annual report. And the town board has had these reports for the last few weeks from the auditor. Did you have any questions? Okay. If not, this would be resolution number 28. Bill, so I can stop talking for a minute. Would you be kind enough to read resolution 28? Well, it's resolved the town board accept the audit stated June 6 for the year ending December 31, 2016, prepared by Lori E. Doty, who is our certified public accountant. The Office of Tax Collector Financial Statements and Independent Auditors Report. The Office of Town Clerk Financial Statements and Independent Auditors Report. The Town Justice Court's Financial Statements and Independent Auditors Report the general fund 2016 and the annual report 2016 and copies have been made available to everybody and I so move the resolution thank you very much Bill. second all right any further discussion all in favor aye. 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 aye thank you very much and we want to thank Ann Conway for the terrific job that she does it makes it so much easier for the auditor and certainly for the town supervisor and Sue McCann. We thank you for keeping those folks in order. Millions of dollars through your hands. That's right. <laughs> so we are on item number five. This is a discussion, perhaps a resolution. Um, it relates to a uh, grant opportunity that uh, the Winnicky Land Trust would like the town of Red Hook to consider. And um, Greg Swansea is here, the executive director of uh, Winnicky. And he was kind enough to meet with uh, members of the uh, Hook Trail, which is a combination of folks from the community, the Trails Committee, um, to uh, discuss this opportunity. And um, I it's safe to say it was a favorable reaction uh, after the meeting. And so Brenda Cagle is here uh, with Greg to uh, give a brief synopsis of what they're considering. Take it away. Who would like to go first? Together. Let's see if we can put something on the magic screen here. And this is from our not yet official trails plan, which is a document that we worked on. There is the Village to Village Trail. So Brenda, would you like to say a little bit about this, Greg? Well, like you said, uh, Greg, as a uh the executive director of Winnicky came to speak to our trails committee and our uh, stakeholder group that involves those folks that were involved in our trail plan. And um, they just recently completed a feasibility uh, study and planning project of the Northern Duchess area, which included the towns of Red Hook, Rhinebeck, and Hyde Park. And as, as a result of that study, whose brain can speak to this better, but as a result of that study, their, their mission was to identify uh, priority connections that would connect those towns. Am I saying this right, Greg? Absolutely. And they came up with uh, several priority projects, and we were fortunate enough not only to be included in the study, but also to um, have one of the highest priority projects located in our town. And it just so happens that it's also a, a project that was considered high priority as part of our trail plan. So we were really um, happy to hear from them and. Uh, especially that they would do uh, the grant work, uh, but would accept, of course, any help we could provide. Um, you know we're working on the Village to Village Trail right now, which is a seven-plus mile, mostly on-road trail as part of a Greenway grant. 
And we will, as a result of that, we'll be doing some traffic calming. We're working with the county on that. We'll be doing wayfinding signage and installing uh, for, for uh, different kiosks. So, uh, but it is, like I said, mostly on roads. So the Sock Hill Link, as we've been calling it, would uh, present an alternative that is off-road. It would, um, it's a very scenic route, uh, runs along the Sock Hill. Um, of course, the route isn't uh, set in stone because, as you can see, uh, private property is involved and it would depend, uh, the success of the route would depend on cooperation and collaboration uh, of the adjoining property owners. Um, in our trail plan, we had a couple of different options. Uh, if you can see, the orange line starts uh, down on Market Street by the high school and goes up to um, the red line and goes west. And they, they all, the terminus is uh, Aspenwall Road. And the other um, option, uh, one, consider, one possible consideration, but I don't think it was in the Winnicky plan, was um, to enter the Sock Hill Trail from uh, Rec Park West. So, of course, it all depends on, um, you know, donations, cooperation, and uh, how, how the concept is received by the landowners. So, um, what else do we have? Well, um, <clears throat> a little, uh, maybe I can give some context into where we came into it. I mean, you started with that. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, we had a, land, a, a grant from the Land Trust Alliance for uh, $25,000. Uh, we had that much left uh, from part of a grant. Um, the grant had also been funding a round table for trails in the county. So we've been working with a lot of different tra trail groups as a result, result of that round table. And so a natural thing to think about was a feasibility study. And uh, so, uh, you know, and of course, we're based in Rhinebeck. And so we thought of uh, Rhinebeck and, and adjoining communities, Red Hook and Hyde Park, where we have uh, some easements and we have, you know, we've got the nature preserve down in Hyde Park. So we thought, okay, what makes sense to start looking at a regional trail network that can connect communities together. So, um, so that's where this feasibility study came in. We interviewed a number of engineering firms, Chase Engineering was chosen, and I can tell you they did an excellent job, especially for that amount of money. I really am impressed with what they did. Uh, they pulled in information from uh, organizations throughout this area that were working on trails. Um, so there was a lot of conversations that took place and we pulled in data and so forth. We created maps, and really, if you, you could zoom in on the maps really far uh, in terms of how much information is there, so we think there'll be good resources going forward for communities um, that we're working with um, in, in the area. So, so anyway, we, we identified 19 different priority segments of trails. It wouldn't, do, it wouldn't connect all the communities together, but these are the 19 that rose to the, to the top in terms of possible, physically possible, and we looked at different parameters. So um, um, there's so each each one of the 19 has one page and a summary of uh, things like the trail length, number of bridges needed, parcel count, number of owners, and the cost. Um, and then more detail on another page, on in, a, in an appendix that goes into unit costing. So how much is a linear, you know, does a, a foot of or a you know 100 feet of trail cost to build? that's eight foot wide with some shoulders and with crushed stone, that kind of thing. So we, we got some good prices. And for the Sawkill Hill Trail, um, which is very consistent with what you see right there because there was a lot of communication going on, it's uh, one point, about $1.2 million is the estimate. Um, and there would be some additional costs uh, to do it. But so right now we're in the process of, how, okay, how can we fund this? Uh, some of it might be donations, but right now we have this opportunity with the community, the uh, consolidated funding applications due on June 20, on uh, July 28th. Um, Winnicky Land Trust is set up with the Grants Gateway. We can access these grants. Um, we have experience uh, writing grants, managing grants, administering them. You know, and we are interested in working with um, projects in Red Hook, Rhinebeck, and Hyde Park. So each of the three communities, we've identified high, high priority projects. Here in Rhinebeck, this is the one, and we would like to, um, we'd like to work with you when we offer to uh, submit the grant on on behalf of all you know all our partners to to do this and administer the grant and so forth. There would be no fiscal op no financial obligation to the to the town, 
to do this, um, what we would we uh, we would be able to access potentially is five hundred thousand dollars in uh, Office of Parks and Recreation Historic Preservation Grant for park development, and up to two hundred thousand dollars for Recreational Trails Program uh, money. So all of that through this uh, process with a due date July twenty eighth. Um, I've been I can tell you I've been I've worked for the City of Kingston for four years. It was very successful at those maximum amounts for the Kingston Green Line, if you've heard that, of that uh, project in Kingston. So I know this can be done. I've seen it get done before, and I can set, tell you this, this does look like a very attractive project um, for a couple reasons. It connects, it helps connect communities together, Red Hook going toward Tivoli, the Village to Village Trail that you've been working on toward. Um, it also is protecting a, a, uh, an area that has, uh, that uh, is a drinking water supply for bar, they pump, pull their water right out of there, so we could also ensure not only with some recreational use, but also uh, protecting lands and working with landowners. So there are a lot of reasons that, that this uh, is attractive, um, and so that's one reason that obviously that we're, as a, as a, um, you know, as a land trust, we are kind of inclined and uh, to, to, uh, to move forward on this and help connect, connect communities together. It fits our mission well. And, uh, we're, we're in perpetuity, so it's something that we are able to go to a, a state agency and say, um, you know, that this is, uh, you know, that we're, it's reasonable that we would ask for the funding and reasonable that they would grant it. So, a stipulation is that there's a resolution and endorsement by each municipality that we work with. So I'm working actually now with several municipalities you could, you could imagine. In looking at can we uh, can we do this? Um, is there support in the community, and can we uh, can we make this happen? Only even though it's on a fairly it's a month and a half, I still am sure I'm still quite confident we can get some grant proposals in by July 28th. But if a, a contingency is a resolution from the community. They want to make sure that you're fully aware that we're uh, looking at access, uh, uh, applying for this funding. And uh, that it doesn't uh, you know, fly in the face of, kind of maybe other uh, goals that you have, or uh, or uh, you know isn't consistent with the priorities that you have. I think, uh, especially working with the trails uh, committee, which has done a lot of great work, we hope that it is consistent. Okay. Very good. And you were going to say a few things about consistency, Brenda. You had a list of things that it sort of matched in our plan. Do you? Uh, <clears throat> Made that first page, you didn't yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to say that there's uh, been a lot of excitement about uh, trails in the area lately, and I was going to mention that um, you know, kind of started with the Upper Route 9G study, and then we had our uh, Greenway grant that did the trail plan, and we did get a draft final trail plan uh, last year, which we had not formally presented to the town board yet because we're working on some uh, formatting of it. And then I wanted to mention that Bard College also got Greenway funding to uh, do a feasibility study on the Tivoli Bay's South, uh, South Bay Trail, and uh, they're working on improving the trail and establishing a link to Montgomery Place. Uh, Winnicky's good work. Uh, we dedicated the uh, Mountain View Trail last summer. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of good energy happening, and I uh, hope you'll support the resolution. And I understand there are others in the uh, Hook Trail Committee that are looking at uh, raising private funds as yes. as the potential match here. Yes, and, um, and I can tell you, well, I've, I've, uh, uh, knowing it's a short timeline, I've started to outreach to landowners. Okay. And actually so far, I haven't reached all of them yet, okay. so that's why it's, it's a tricky business, isn't it, right. to present projects like this and, and, and get a green light or at least a yellow light to move forward. By the community in, in general, but also we need to work with landowners. It's their land, so right. so far it's positive. I can tell you. Um, I've also talked to uh, begin conversations with uh, Cindy Hudson, who have an easement in that area uh, that we're talking about here. So also positive. So um, so far so good. So I can say. Okay, and and that's one of the uh, services you're offering as part of writing the grant. You'll also meet with the landowners and. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're willing landowners and so on and so forth. Well, a stipulation for them would be that their the land would be a, it would be an easement. If public money is, is put into a project, 
uh, on, on private land, there needs to be an easement that ensures public access. Right. So they, they would need to, you know, uh, be willing to land we, we, we could develop an easement with them. That's, well, so that's one, op you know, one option. Right. Very good. Um, any questions from Sarah? I know you've been sitting in on these meetings. Um, I can just tell you that we, I think the people around the table seemed, the Trails Committee and other stakeholders seemed really positive about the idea of going forward with this, and I think it's great. The, the idea of planning trails regionally, I think, makes a lot of sense, or, you know, in not just one community, because we're all connected in other, many other ways besides trails, so trails is an obvious way to connect, so... I'm excited that we're part of Winnicke's plan and that we um, can at least try for this. If they're willing to do a lot of the heavy lifting for the grant application, then I think that's a win for us. So I'm excited to see it go forward. Okay. <coughs> Bill, anything? No. I'm ready to pass the resolution. Okay. Harry? I, I, I just have a question um, about what, what, where you have identified a route for this, for this trail. And, and you say along Market Street, would it go across, would it, it would start at Market Street, going down Linden Avenue, and across the bridge, no? No? Where am I, what, where am um, I missing? Well, this does call for two bridges to be installed, okay. to, so it would, it would cross, it potentially would cross at another location than Linden, if, I'm, if I've got my geography correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. you must have been and then it would mm -hmm. follow on the north side of the Sauk Hill, Okay. And then cross through the, the chicken hill. farm there. Uh, well, and I, yes. Okay. Well, potentially now. I, 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 I no, I understand. There are other conversations going on. I, okay. I for one, have not talked to the that landowner okay. as yet. So, and the other thing is that we would ask for design and construction money with this grant, mm -hmm. so that there's we, if we need to modify the design from once concept, conceptually done here, obviously we would be obliged to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think a lot of the conversations that I hope will happen between now and the end of July mm -hmm. will really disclose, uh, you know, firm up whether this we're on the right track here with this with this with this course. It would be an ideal, from my my point of view, the ideal. But I, it's going to take a lot of cooperation from a lot of people, landowners there. Yeah. yeah. It's about a mile, I believe, isn't it? It's it's about two miles. It's almost two miles. Is it that far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to be clear for everybody. If we didn't get enough buy-in from the various property owners, then we wouldn't do it. It's not this time, right? And But passing this resolution simply says that the town's aware that this project is being proposed and that we're, like, authorizing you to to apply for it, basically. Or, I mean, it's a that's basically all it is, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's a letter it's of a, support. It's yeah. endorsing. It's an endorsement, right, yeah. exactly. So if it falls through at this point, it falls through, but you're going to at least start checking around and figure it out. Yes, and, and we're willing to take that risk that it, it could, but it's, uh, it's been some good work done on it, and uh, it's, it's an important project. If we could do it, it would be a good one. So. And it's going to require quite a bit of work between now and the end of July, and you don't want to do that unless you know that we're comfortable, provided the landowners are comfortable um, with, with the trail being engineered and constructed. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Jim? No, I think it's a great idea. I, my only thought or one was that... Um, as part of the easement discussion, I presume we hold the landowners harmless, mm -hmm. you know, well, for liability issues when we're uh, having a trail easement on their land, because I mean, that would be a, a big point to them, I would think. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a statute in the state in mm -hmm. of New York for that protects landowners when there's not a fee charge mm -hmm. for uh, uh, allowing people to go through from there on it. And, and I think, you know, I think, um, I think the community would be the community, in, which would include Winnipeg and I, and many people in the community, would, would look at how to maintain these trails. And so it wouldn't, you know, it's not a, it wouldn't be a, an obligation on the landowner to maintain them, uh, but they and they also wouldn't be liable for them. So, yeah, that, that so that trails great, yeah, yeah, but it, they wouldn't be liable. And if you look at the recreational right. use statute. It's, it's why a lot of rail trails exist, for example, and a lot of pathways exist uh, in this in this state. We open up that spot that a lot of people never get to see along the Salt Hill there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
about a secret process. I mean, yeah. there'll be a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. And so, and so we'll back, yeah, we would be back to see you, all right, on this, because uh, you'd probably be involved in that process, for sure. So. But we are interested in protecting conservation values at the same time we want you know, to provide services to the communities. A very exciting idea, actually, yeah. Well, that's the one I pulled out of your thing. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. We have um, an endorsement resolution, which I just want to make sure I have the most current one. This is the endorsement application. Yeah. I just wasn't sure. Okay. Robert, the, yes, uh, there are a lot of trails committee folks here because it's trail meeting, right? So I don't know if they had any comments. Any comments? From the trails? Our dedicated trails committee members doing a terrific job. Are you excited about that? Well, we've talked about this uh, section of the trail, and, you know, it, it would be very nice as far as, you know, getting a part of that village to village. Because you know, a lot of trails that are proposed go along highways and streets. This will be nice scenic trail. And also, you know, since it'll be along the river there, I wonder if will the, can you get any money from the DEC because it'll give access to fishermen along the, the stream there, and they might be able to come up with a few bucks. Yeah, the uh, DEC. Uh, uh, yeah, there's some. There, there, there's several agencies mm -hmm. for. Uh, for that, or, or uh, just protecting water quality, mm -hmm. too, which uh, if we you know, look at the lands around it and buffering those waterways. So there, there are several options beyond just these two grants. And I'm sure you'll get enough volunteers to maintain these trails. It seems like a really nice project. Great. Thank you, Bruce. I heard an offer on that. <laughs> I know I <laughs> have my tractor. Uh, and to your question about DEC, um, I think I mentioned earlier Megan Long from. Uh, the DEC estuary program, who was here earlier for a meeting, by the way, will be back in just a little while to, to join us tonight, so you're welcome to quiz her on some of those uh, funds for trail-related projects. So, okay, we have an endorsement. It's a resolution. Let's call it 29, shall we? Okay. <coughs> Endorsing Winnipeg Land Trust for grants for trail projects. Jim, could I impose upon your vocal cords? Would you mind? <coughs> Certainly, Robert. Uh, whereas the Winnicky Land Trust is applying to the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation for grants under the Environmental Protection Fund and Recreational Trails Program for a trails project to be located in the town of Rebecca, a site located within the territorial jurisdiction of this town board as described in the correspondence on file of the town clerk. And whereas as a requirement under the rules of these programs, said not-for-profit corporation must obtain the approval slash endorsement of the governing body of the municipality in which the project will be located. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Reddick, by a fair vote of not less than a majority of all of us, hereby endorses the application of Winnipeg Land Trust for grants under the Environmental Protection Fund and Recreational Trails Program for a trails project as a Sawkill Link Trail and located within this community. I so move. Thank you very much, Jim. I will second your motion. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here twice in one day. Yeah. We appreciate it, Brenda, as always. Thank you. Trails Committee, get some sleep. There's going to be a lot of work to do if this goes through. Thank you all. So while we, while we are on the topic of water and trails, there is a resolution in support of Clearwater's sale to D.C. as a way to highlight the need to protect our clean water and other environmental protections. We have a resolution, and this is in honor of... This is a milestone for them, right? I believe it's... It's not for 50 years, but it's, it's certainly some number. I forget what it is. Um, we have a very lengthy resolution up here. 
which does carry additional. Just go right to the resolve. Yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't heard us here before, <coughs> we're very nervous about what's being contemplated for the Hudson River with the barges. And um, it's just one of the issues that the Clearwater is going to highlight. Right now they are in fact sailing down there. They started just a couple of days ago. So this lengthy resolution which um, they prepared a draft for us to consider. I, I happen to have, if I remember correctly, 40 some odd years ago, uh -oh. You were there. I, I, I was there at, at, with South Street Feet before South Street Seaport right. was complete. That's and right. the and the, the clear water came there on their way for a previous trip. Were you a diapers on Harry? Just about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, on that note. Um, so uh, one of the things they highlight in this resolution is uh, whereas existing federal clean water protections have recently been rolled back or are coming under threat from many quarters, including um, using the Congressional Review Act to undo the stream protection rule, which previously protected waterways from surface coal mining pollution. We don't have that issue here locally, but obviously water is an issue for all of us. Using the EPA rulemaking process to repeal and replace the waters of the United States rule, which extended Clean Water Act protections to 60% of U.S. streams and 20 million acres of wetland. And these waters and wetlands will soon lose those protections if the rule is undone. And then they talk about cuts to, proposed cuts to the EPA, 31%, and grants for water protection programs, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, so they're talking about nearly a billion dollars worth of cuts that are being proposed to Office of Water programs. So we have a now therefore be resolved that the town of Red Hook, Dutchess County, New York, hereby registers its deep concern over current rollbacks and threats to federal clean water protections, as described above, affirms the need for sound science-based water policy for adequate regulation, enforcement, and funding as pressure on water quality and safety continue to mount. We also wish to express our support for the effort Clean Wa Clear Water is leading to carry our concerns and concerns of many New Yorkers for clean water and other environmental protections directly to Washington. I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So I see Megan has not yet joined us, so we will just continue on. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is a culvert grant. Um, Kimberly had prepared it for Crawford and Associates. I had thought that she was going to come and do a presentation before the board on the results of that, um, that study. Is, is that going to happen? I, I don't anticipate that it's going to happen, no, because we discussed it at a previous meeting. I don't know if you were here at that meeting or not, but we went through um, the results, the highlights of the results. And Megan, who's familiar with the report, is actually going to be joining us in just a little bit. We, we could, if, if, if you so desire, we could have Kimberly come back. As a requirement to close out that grant, we need to go ahead and approve this tonight. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly we can have a full-blown presentation, and we could even do that as early as next week. Yes, I got my documents yesterday. Did. Yeah. So I was just—I mean, I understand what it's all about, but I didn't know if if there was a presentation by Kimberly to the board. I wasn't here for that meeting. I didn't see it on the agenda. It was not a presentation from her, but we did review the results of, of that report. Of the most recent several. Report? several weeks ago. I don't have anything updated as of yesterday, if that's what you're saying. No, no, I'm just saying that I got the documents yesterday. And I don't was, know why. It had been my understanding all along that Kimberly was going to present the scope of the findings to the yeah. board. We, we didn't arrange that for tonight, but we do have Megan here to answer questions about going forward. And um, Megan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, sorry about that. No, softball no. game right over. How did, how did it work out? Did you win your game or did you lose 
You know, we were holding them strong up until the sixth inning, and they came back with a vengeance and crushed us 32 to 9. So. <laughs> well. My team was just happy to be out of the office. <laughs> did you, you had fun then? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> Other so much. So, um, yes, we um, had this report a while back um, on the culvert improvements, and then we had a meeting where we talked about um, applying for grants. We thought we were going to apply for a grant to replace two culverts. We ultimately did not do that, a combination of concern over um, not having a good idea of the cost of the bigger project. And the uh, second thing was that we felt our engineers, or they felt, that there was too short a time period to make that application. And we had questions, as you know, about what would be covered with the grant funds, the design, work, so on and so forth. If we were to go out and apply for the grant, be given the money, then we go out and do an RFP, and if those numbers should be dramatically different, and we decided then not to go forward, what would that mean for the monies that we've expended so far, for example? So um, we do have a resolution to approve that uh, plan. But before that, could you uh, maybe come and, and tell us who you are, say a few words about um, the project um, that we're signing off on, and also grant opportunities going forward? Sure. Yeah. Um, so can everyone hear me back there? Yeah, so there's a mic oh. right there if you want. Oh, man. That's okay. Don't worry about it. This is stressful. Post, yeah. post you sounded loud and clear without, without it. Oh, thank you. Okay, so my name is Megan Lung. I'm an environmental analyst with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, Hudson River Estuary Program. Um, also, I'm with New EPIC, the New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission. And now that I've seen all of your faces and I've said that whole mouthful, I will never say that ever again because it is a tedious thing to say. Um, but I work with my supervisor on aquatic barrier projects, so dams, culverts, bridges. Um, primarily, my field work includes surveying culverts, similar to the work that was done here in 2013 through Dutchess County Soil and Water. And then the next steps and what I've been focusing on is working with communities to get that data out of a database and get it in the hands of local decision makers, so where we can identify, um, A, which crossings are the most detrimental to um, fish and organism passage. So. Mostly at the estuary program, we focus on herring and eel, our bread and butter species that we adore. Um, but we also look at turtles, salamanders. Certainly when I'm out in the field, my number one indicator that there is a problematic culvert or um, bridge nearby is that there are unfortunately little dead turtles lining the road. And then the second part of our project with some of the data that we take, we send it to um, Cornell University and they do a core scale um, GIS based modeling. So we try to assume looking at just the one culvert, what is the, um, what storm size can it accommodate before it ups and overtops the road. So it's really coarse scale, but we're hoping to assist communities in filtering out, um, out of say 100 crossings, what are the problematic 20, or in this case, what were the top 10. Um, so the town got a grant through the estuary program through the DEC Grants Gateway, so it was a state grant, um, to evaluate some data that was collected in 2013 and in 2015 by Dutchess County Soil and Water. It also had, um, results from Cornell University, so that core scale hydrolo hydraulic bottling. And the purpose of the grant was to look at the data, filter out A, which crossings is the town responsible for, and B, what are the town's top 10 um, flooding concerns that also link up with the estuary program's um, um, aquatic organism concerns. So through the protocol that we use, it's called the North Atlantic Aquatic Connectivity Collaborative. That's another mouthful, so I'll just call it NAC from now on. Um, but this is a free database that um, we follow, 13 other, um, other North Atlantic states are following it from Maine to West Virginia. So that data is all stored there, you guys can look at it any time, and indeed if new crossings are added. Um, so the grant was to go through all these crossings, figure out what is the town's responsibility, what are town priorities, what are estuary program priorities, and then look at what are some costs of mitigating these crossings. So keep looking at what kind of permits would be in mind, what are some potential structures, what are the, what's the initial um, estimate upfront investment. It's definitely better, larger crossings that are also um, accommodate floodwaters and are more organism friendly are an investment to communities. Um, so that's why we hope to offset that cost with grant programs. So I think, is that, does that kind of cover that's the? That's great. And just awesome. to remind the folks at home that we had identified, through the report identified three culverts as having severe
severe barriers, when we looked at those culverts, um, we identified two that we thought were worthy of applying for grant monies, yep. and then ultimately um, we did not apply for, for right. the grants. So can you now tell us when the next round is expected, and also perhaps answer some of those questions related to design work and so on and so forth? Sure. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to say for, sh for sure that the grants will be available, because um, I don't want to get any hopes up, but we do anticipate being able to offer um, grants either through the DEC Grants Gateway um, or through my organization, New EPIC. Um, we hope to be able to offer those on an annual basis, so hopefully around next March we'll see something come out. I can't promise that, but that is what we are hoping for and indeed what we're expecting. Um, for the grant that closed in, I believe that one closed in April through New EPIC, um, and I should clarify that depending on the funding source, um, I know the DEC grants gateway, or DEC grants, do require a match. Um, New EPIC grants do not. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when looking at sources. So for the one, that, the track that we're hoping to get communities on, um, for the entire estuary watershed is what we're trying to assess is first inventory the crossing. So Red Hook in this case already had an inventory. Our second step is to prioritize crossings within that inventory. So this is similar to what you guys did. Um, we're hoping to do that on like a large scale. So for the entirety of the town's crossings, um, we would have a document or a book, something physical that people could access where we have a replacement plan, we have estimate costs for um, crossings within the town. And then the third step before actual mitigation is um, getting 100% shovel-ready engineering design plan. So those are kind of our three steps that we're hoping to move communities forward with potential um, funding opportunities that I can't guarantee, but we really are hoping to offer those on an annual basis. So if we identified which we did, two of those three severe barriers, mm -hmm. because we know that the ones that are rated severe are the ones that are going to merit the attention of the grant uh, funders, you would recommend that at first we just apply for design monies or, or go further than that, maybe? Um, it depends on what the spirit of the grant is. Okay. Um, some of the grants, like the big um, million dollar aquatic barrier one mm -hmm. that closed, I believe that one would have funded both design and um, construction. Um, some of them only, fo only fund um, designing, some are, could, I think most, for most grants, if they're funding mitigation, I think there can be a case to be made within, depending on the spirit of the grant. Like, if it doesn't say no, it's probably game. So we actually heard that it wouldn't fund the design. So we would really appreciate any clarification on that. Right, for, this was the, the this was the DEC grant? Mm -hmm. The one that we, the big know, one, okay. Worked, the big one, the million dollar one. So if we could get it, some clarification, right. preferably in writing, because that's the kind of thing that we. Right, I can check, I can check back on that. Okay. Um, the only reason I know the New Epic grant um, so well is because I wrote it. So okay. I spent okay. spent a very I spent a nice winter with that grant and all the writing. Okay. So that's why I'm so um, intimately familiar with that. And that one but does or does not include the design. The the New Epic one that closed um, was for design work. Okay. That one was not for mitigation or actual construction. I think okay. the DEC one um, was looking for construction. Okay. So when those become available, um, I. Once they become available, obviously for the sake of competitiveness and fairness, I'm not able to, um, I can't walk you walk individuals through, oh, yeah. this would be a good project or this would not be. But certainly when they come out, we will absolutely notify everyone, we'll notify our partners because we want to get good projects, we want to help communities start getting some things in the ground. And I'm sorry, if I missed it, new pick you're also expecting next year sometime in the beginning? Okay. I'm looking for wood, but... Okay. Not that chair. No, you will not find any of these chairs. Blast! I'll go for the door then. But yeah, okay. yeah so we, I can't. We can't guarantee it. We'd like to see it. We okay. hope to see it because um, this is something that you know we have a goal by 2020 to assess 50 percent of the watershed. Um, so we're running out of assessments to do. So we want communities to be in a place to um, start mitigating some of these barriers and especially making them more resilient to um, flooding concerns. And so on the, on the uh, second question, if we were to go out to bid on a project, a construction project, with either one of these two grant opportunities, <laughs> and then the bid comes in outrageously different than the grant that we applied for, right. the grant amount, what happens then if we've expended some funds and it just doesn't look like a financially feasible thing for us? We can come back to those organizations and ask for more money. We can forego the opportunity. Help me here. Right. Um, I'm going to answer as best I can. Okay. I will follow up with um, Susan Peppy, who is our grant officer. Yeah. She is 
magical if anyone has had the opportunity to work with Susan. Um, what I would guess is that if something came in outrageously high, I would hope that there would also be like a spread. So you're always going to get one that's outrageously low or outrageously high, one that's suspiciously low. So I would hope that wouldn't happen. But in the event that that would happen, I would defer to Susan. So I can check back with her and like the hypothetical, like what happens if you guys go up to bed with um, a firm either to design or to do mitigation and just comes back like completely out of the budget or out of scope. Okay. I would hope that wouldn't happen. Um, most, um, I'd like to think that most um, organizations are pretty clear about reading and meeting expectations and not shooting for something that's drastically A, out of the scope of the budget or outside of um, what's expected or the median cost. Sometimes with these projects, as I think there was one community in the Eastern Duchess um, around Ingram, Ingram area. Oh, yes. Yeah. That one where they thought it was going to cost X amount of dollars and it ended up costing a lot more. <coughs> yeah, so Anchor was an interesting case. I wish my supervisor was here. He um, is the project manager on that particular okay. grant. But for Anchor, they received a grant in 20, I believe 2015 or 2016, they received a grant for 220, I think $221,000, which um, Colleen Lutz was the main contact on that. So I can absolutely put you guys in contact with her information, her experience going through it. but. Um, in the scope of their town budget, um, she did a really nice job of displaying like what is Ancrum's annual highway budget versus what the grant was, and I believe that was a 25% match. So for Ancrum, it turned out that they were able to design three culverts and replace two. They replaced one last summer. They'll be doing another one this summer for less than the price of one culvert. So there was like a match on the community's behalf, um, but in scope of what's available for them, it turned the grant turned out to be advantageous, especially in getting some of that design work done. But I think what Andrew and I are seeing, Andrew Meyer is my supervisor, we're seeing that for all is said and done designing and replacing um, complicated crossings, we're looking at, I think, about 100 grand a piece okay. is what we're hoping for. Okay. And certainly some are less complicated that require less permitting. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, like definitely keep me in the loop. We're here to help. Okay. I want to get out with a hard hat as much as you all do. Well, it sounds like we have plenty of time to prepare. We, we we're under the gun for time to frame, and oftentimes we're able to pull it off. We weren't this time. Though. Yeah, grant, grants are definitely a lot of hurry up and yeah. wait. But with having the adopting this prioritization plan, you have your top ten candidates that, um, first of all, they're flooding concerns for the community, for the town. They're ones that you guys need to replace or desire to replace anyway. They're also biologically sound as far as we're concerned, according to those NAC scores and the presence of the American eel within the Salt Hill watershed. So when the next opportunity opens, you guys are ahead of the game because you ha you've already looked at it, you've got candidates in mind, like you said, you have your top two, those severe barriers, and I think both of those are under a five-year storm of capacity, is that right? Uh, I have to double check, but... I, I don't know. Do you know if it's up again? I don't know. No, as I said, I, I didn't get time to review the papers. Yeah. Okay. I can probably check and like look up on that, but I'm pretty sure if they got if they floated to the top um, biologically, they also tend to be um, flooding hazards as well. Okay. But yeah, that's exciting. So we hope to get more communities on track with what Red Hook is doing in terms of reviewing the data, making the data useful to you all, and any feedback you have on that is excellent for us as well. Okay. Um, does anybody else have questions for Megan? Thank you. No. Oh, thank you all. Okay, Teresa, anything? No. Okay. Um, so to close out the grant, and we certainly can ask Kimberly if she'd like to come and do a full-blown report that was that 90-page digital document that you were sent uh, last week or so, the final version of it. We have a resolution, I believe it's number 31. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, Sarah, can I impose upon you to read 31? Sure. Um, so this is a resolution accepting a report regarding prioritization of culvert improvements for the Sawk Hill watershed, whereas the town of Red Hook received, <coughs> received a grant from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, DEC, Hudson River Estuary Program for funding to conduct a project to study certain watersheds, and whereas Crawford and Associates Engineering completed the prioritization of culvert improvements study dated April 2017. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Red Hook 
hereby accepts the Sauk Hill Water <coughs> Study for the Sauk Hill Watershed. Okay, thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much, Megan. As always, thank you twice in one day. I know, it's a treat. We're doing a lot of uh, work with uh, the state, DEC in particular. We have, I think, three grants now that are intersecting with DEC, working concurrently, and we really appreciate your expertise and your assistance because we're new at it. And it's exciting. We really exciting. appreciate um, communities that are willing to, to work with us and to uh, help us with the work that we need to do. Not take chances, but right. get out there and get ahead of everything. Right. So we really appreciate all of you. We wouldn't be able to do this interview without our, our great partners. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate it. Okay. Very good. Um, we are moving on to lucky number seven on the agenda, and that is a reorganization. Um, we have a couple of uh, resignations. We're sorry to report uh, Michael Collegio. Um, he is writing to let us know that he needs to step down from the CAC in order to pursue um, this thing called college, I think it is. So we perfectly understand and we thank him for his service and I have uh, a good feeling we'll get him back when he has more time to, uh, to dedicate. <clears throat> and so uh, there will be or is a vacancy on the Conservation Advisory um, Council. If someone at home is interested in joining that, please set a, send a letter of interest to our town clerk, Sue McCann, at redhook.org. You can get her email address on the website. Uh, we also have a resignation from Charlie Lang. Charlie, who was on our planning board for 13 years, as you know, was um, elected a village trustee after moving into the village from the township a little while back. And um, he's recognizing that he can't juggle everything. And so um, we want to thank him for his uh, long standing and terrific service on the planning board. And we, um, I was in touch with Christine Kane, our chair, and um, she thinks we should go ahead this evening and appoint our alternate so that we don't have issues of quorums. Um, appoint him alternate, right? I'm sorry? Appoint Charlie Lang. Well, alternate. that that too, that as well, yeah. So Charlie is willing to stay on as an alternate. We have anybody else? So we can call them in. Well, well we you? have our alternate, Bill Hamill. And so... Um, he did sit in on the most recent meeting, I think. They've had to call Bill. Back. Bill has actually been in the last no. several meetings, yeah. And they can alter it. Yeah, so there's one for Charlie, if we want to. Yeah. And then there's one for Bill. Yeah. Bill's right. right. So well, we my suggestion... Charlie tonight. Right. My suggestion is that we, um, now that there is a vacancy um, from Charlie in the uh, term that ends 2023, that we appoint Bill Hamill, who's been our alternate for several meetings now, a few months, and has attended every meeting, um, that we appoint him to fill that vacancy. And uh, Christine Kane is okay with that. And so I would so move that we do that. Thank you. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? This is for a term, finishing a term ending in 2023. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. And then we now have uh, two vacancies for the alternate. And so I would uh, propose that we we have two terms here. So let's do um, the uh, Bill Hamill alternate period, which ends 2018 for Charlie Lang, because I think this is going to be a temporary appointment for him but a helpful one nonetheless for the planning board because he has been involved in some long-standing projects. So I would uh, make a motion that we appoint Charlie Lang as an alternate for the term that uh, William Hamill had, and that is uh, 
ending in 2018. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So that's all I have for uh, the reorganization. We switch positions. Tonight. Yeah. yeah. They've traded places, yes. as they say. Traded places. All right. Um, we did not get to last month's um, boards and committee reports because we had um, a lengthy uh, agenda item that meeting. And so um, we are doing it this evening. So that's item number eight on the agenda. And speaking of planning board, we have a planning board report up on the screen. And Jim, if you'd be kind enough to, uh, to read that, that would be great. <clears throat> planning board report, May 2017. Uh, the board met twice in May. The board commenced to continue to review the following applications. A minor subdivision application to create two parcels, 2.16 acres at 5.9 from an 8.06 parcel in the R1.5 zoning district. A special permit renewal of the Bard College master plan. An application to revise and approve site plan for the two 4050 square foot storage buildings to one 3,000 square foot storage building and a 684 square foot garage. Countryside storage amendment site plan an application for the amended site plan for a change of business use um, Rhinebeck party rental um, uh, amended site plan. That's where the uh, stove place right. was in um, Upper Record there. The, the board granted the approval to the application for the lot nine alteration combined with an application for a special permit for a driveway through a state protected freshwater wetland in the Ag Business District. And that's the extent of the report for the month of May. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. I don't believe we have a CBA report, although I thought there was one submitted. Why don't we uh, switch to... I wasn't here for the last meeting, so I can only have one item before today. Well, while we search for that, Sarah, what are you looking for? What's that? What are you look, which one are you looking for? Uh, ZBA. I don't, I don't know that it's... It met last Wednesday and I haven't gotten a report yet. I, was, I, I, I thought Ann submitted something, but we can, we can catch it at next week's meeting. Um, we do have a monthly dog control report. Sarah, if you'd be kind enough just to summarize. Yeah, sure. So people can see up on the screen, but um, there were seven loose dog or related incidents in April and that was all that was reported. Um, so certainly dog incidents are the highest amount of type of incident that gets reported and with the weather being nicer, there is a significant uptick in those kinds of incidents. Um, and I just want to recognize that this, the DCSPCA is our dog control um, office of, of record and we um, thank them for responding to all kinds of calls and as far as I know they've been very prompt in their um, response time um, and we get notes on all the special and interesting kinds of things that they deal with. Um, so the information for how to find them is on our website or you can call the town clerk's office and they can direct you where to call. Um, and please do keep your dogs leashed, keep them within your fencing, if at all possible. Promptly find them if they are loose. That's uh, a big help to everybody. Very good, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, Jim, there's a building and zoning report, a lengthy one, if you could just summarize for us. Yes, the monthly report for the May of 2017, 25 permits were issued, 34 inspections, 15 COCCs, and a total revenue of $8,627. Very good. Seems that like gives us a synopsis. And um, this is largely alteration work that's being done on uh, properties in town. Good. Okay, Bill, we have a police department report. <coughs> well, for the month of uh, May, 
There were uh, total incidents for reporting period were 57 that were addressed by the uh, police department. Their total arrests were 12, and tickets issued during the period were 55. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> Jim, we have a water district report. If you would like to summarize. Yep. Um, the water pumped. This is uh, the May 18th work session report, so it's the April report that was developed at their May 18th work session. The water pumped 77,000 gallons, um, are normal, and in April of this year we pumped 74,000 gallons. Um, the wells are running uh, running fine. The well monitoring update as part of the pump control updates is still being done on well number two. Pump volumes, well number one pumps 230 gallons a minute, and well number two pumps 240 gallons a minute. So they're both still yielding very well. The normal tests, the coliform, turbidity, chlorine, and everything were all fine. Uh, let me see, the filtrations, all the filters are working fine. They keep the spare filters. The, they have the plenty of um, chlorine on hand. Now, they've, uh, as far as discussed projects and so forth, they've discussed street valve operation schedule for 2017. Uh, the wall control, that's the ongoing circuit breaker problem that they're working to double solution for. They've asked Crawford Associates for a proposal to review and make recommendations for updates to include considerations for replacing the current configuration with variable frequency drive controls. Um, the reason for that is uh, would be quite a savings, you know, rather than pumps going at full bore all the time, which mm -hmm. is a, a newer way they often look to do that. Mm -hmm. They got a water plant assessment um, update. Um, with an estimate of 4,500, uh, they received a draft proposal, bring reviewed for a total cost of 38, you know, for pump house facility reviews. Um, um, they're going to rotate the pump in the storage shed. Our, our operator VRI will do that. Meter replacement, 92 Manor Road, and water storage standpipe inspection request for proposal was mailed on <coughs> the 22nd. So the, the, the major work item list for the year would be the, the water tank inspection, and they've sent out the RFPs as we just learned. And the well number two rehab has been post in 2018. We know, if you recall, the one number, number one was done and actually done again, and it's been mm -hmm. fine since then, and two is still operating. But it was suggested or recommended that we rehab that in the not-too-distant future. Uh, the Ross valve inspection and repair was completed in January. And the fence repair at the water tower is waiting for a return call from the fencing people. Very good. And that's the extent of that. Thank you very much, Tim. And, and while we're discussing water board, you know, there's that um, $2 billion that, that was announced several months ago for water infrastructure. And it looks like our water tank, which we know that we're going to have to do something with in the near future, may be eligible for some of those funds. So we're going to uh, have a little get together and see what, when, and how we might uh, apply for some of those monies for our water district. So just to let you know, that's Is something. To, re to repaint the inside of it? Well, that's either to we'll repaint or to put a new one. The reason being is that uh, sometimes <coughs> it's it's just better to put a new one than to repaint the old one, and the cost isn't all that different. So, <coughs> all right, good. Um, Bill, we have a, a brief uh, task force report. Well, weekly meetings in May, April, and May, the task force continued to review proposed language to amend the current zoning law regarding signs in Tanaretto, and the proposed uh, zoning law regarding solar energy in the Tanaretto. And the task force also reviewed revisions by Green Plan Inc. to the proposed Hamlet Business District adjacent to the Hamlet of Upper Red Hook in a draft that was dated 5 2 of 17. Okay, thank you, Harry. We have a rec uh, commission report. If you'd be kind enough to summarize <laughs> yes. it, please. In lieu of an hour and a half talk. Um, <laughs> The, the, the basic uh, report cover, covers everything that's been done to get the program, the uh, rec recreation 
uh, uh, facilities operational for this year and, and the various programs staffed and, and moving along. Uh, Jen Norris will, will run the summer program for the uh, summer playground program for the young kids. Um, the, 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 rec the facilities have, are all up and working and in good condition. There's been an effort to try and determine what needs to be done to rebuild uh, the, the tennis courts. There is a recycling um, containers are now have been installed and uh, the trees that, that were getting to the point of being dangerous in the, in the uh, playground area have been taken down. Um, there are a number of, of uh, maintenance issues that will continue some through the summer. But, but what had to be done to get, to get the programs going this summer uh, is complete and they're ready to start. Good sign up so far. Almost all, all the sign ups are complete. Very good. Thank you, Harry. And just to remind the folks at home, we're looking at several uh, upgrades to our rec facility. One is a multi year build out of the new rec annex lands on the western side of Linden Avenue, where the trail is right now. And we're also uh, looking at upgrading the play equipment. And we've had several meetings, Sarah's been a part of that. And uh, so we hope to have something um, for the town board to take a look at, you know, perhaps in the next month or so. Is that a reasonable yeah, expectation? I think that's right. okay. Yeah, we're just sort of um, going over a, a proposed plan, making some changes and suggestions. And it's just sort of a sketch out of what we could accomplish in the playground area, and then we'll have to figure out, you know. How, what it will cost and the funding and all that. So it'll definitely take some time, but okay. yeah. um, one other thing I just want to mention, since it is summer rec season, that we do have a new rec playground director, Jen Norris, who is also a village trustee, and I think everybody is really excited about Jen coming on board, and I know she's already put a lot of really great Facebook posts out letting people know like, who's on staff this year and what kinds of things are planned, including um, some opportunities for kids who have some, you know, like sens sensory sensitivities, which I think is so great. It, the rec program tends to be, as you might imagine, very kind of loud, boisterous play, which is wonderful, but not everybody is into that. And so Jen is kind of thinking outside of our typical rec box and also um, has a lot more posts about like arts and crafts opportunities and things like that. So it looks like it's going to be a really exciting year, and although we already had our official signups. It's not too late. If you want to participate, you should, you know, download the forms and come in and, and sign your kids up. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, we are finished with our board and committee reports, as far as I can tell. We do have a little bit of correspondence. Um, the first item is a letter from our Congressman John Fazzo, and he talks, he writes to us to talk about the proposed anchorages along the Hudson River and how his office has uh, crafted um, a bill, H.R. 2518, which imposes a six month time limit for the Coast Guard to submit to Congress a detailed summary of the public comments it has collected related to its proposed. 10 Anchorage sites for barges between Yonkers and Kingston. The report must also include the Coast Guard's analysis of these concerns. None of the proposed anchorages may be established during this time. So it's a moratorium bill, essentially, that he has for a short period of time. And um, he goes on to say that he believes protecting the Hudson and its adjacent communities is a critical issue. Um, the uh, second item, uh, correspondence, is something that um, I shared with you uh, a few weeks ago, which is uh, Verizon, through one of its uh, agents, uh, engineering firm, is interested in a potential lease with us here at this facility for a small cell antenna, um, and following up with them, um, they are either interested in putting something on the 
highway garage roof, or um, they even identified the salt shed, which wouldn't be an appropriate place, especially if that's not going to be there for 20 or 30 years. Um, they are interested in the lease, the amount of which is um, quite nominal, so it's something that we're going to have to consider uh, moving forward, um, whether, whether or not we're interested, but they would like to place it on uh, the town hall campus property here. So that's all I have. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just found the tree commission report. Oh. Should I? I I'm please. I'm sorry that I wasn't looking at it when you. That's okay. I may have skipped over it. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. Would you like to read it? Yeah, yeah sure. I can do it. Or if, okay. if Linda, who's the secretary of that committee, feels like. I don't have that. Yeah, you don't okay. have the minutes. Okay, okay. then I'll, 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 just, try I'll try. This yeah, I'll do my best, and then you tell me if there's something I missed. Any this is from April, so it also may not be the most up to date. Um, but. Uh, four town tree committee members and one village green member attended the tree city recognition ceremony in Albany and we are going on 11 years 11 years as a tree city so that's exciting um, there was a spring tree planting um, which happened around Arbor Day right um, and then the Arbor Day celebration was a big hit um, the library was there there was tree climbing gear demonstrated and knot tying, hands-on activities, raffle basket, poster contest winners, a luncheon for the volunteers, tree plant, uh, trees available for planting, right? Um, like free, what are they called? Uh, seedlings. Seedlings, thank you. Um, pruning has begun at the north end of the rec park. Um, did the centennial tree get planted at Treble's Garage yet? Yes. Yeah, because this is a this is an older three trees part. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, three trees there. Um, and they're all doing well. And I know that already the uh, the Mill Road Tree Educational Program went forward. Eleanor did that, right? right. Eleanor Friary, and that was a big hit. I know my son participated. He just did he a said, bio blitz um, with Nancy Gusky too. Okay, and Nancy Gusky also did some, and my son, the first grader, reported it was too short so we want more more tree education so according to the first graders but so it seems like you guys are very busy I know this is your busy season really so we'll have a more updated report next time and most importantly the uh, people gave us donations $265 that's right $265 worth of, of donations from the community which is wonderful and, and we'll just go into more yeah yeah the tree money for Trees. Yeah, yes. great. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you very much, Sarah. Okay, we are at that point of the evening. Um, any further public comments? Yes. Okay. Uh, Linda Keeling again. Um, this is on a different topic. Uh, a community member approached me and inquired as to why dogs that were supposed to be euthanized by uh, the order of Judge Trevons are, are being buried from one place to the other, and we're paying for this. If they're supposed to be euthanized, they should be euthanized. So, Linda, I can answer the question because the order was appealed and is on appeal, and the appeal is going to be heard on Thursday. All this time, it's been on appeal to the appellate division. It takes that long for issues to get before the court, I'm afraid to say. So, the town has to pay for this all, all you know, the time? Can we uh, get the money back? Justice is what justice is. We have to prove, you know, the matter, and uh, so it's going through the court system. That's where we are right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry to say, but that's where we are. Trust us. If we if we could do something about it, we we yeah. would we would. Nobody uh, nobody wants to be moving to dogs around. Or and, and I'll just okay. clarify that the Sorry, dogs yeah. were only moved one time um, to, you know, they were kind of in an initial spot. It would not have been good for them to be held long term and we saw once the appeal went forward that we would need to have it, them in a place that was, you know, suitable for yeah. months and months of potential. Every, every so often we should say to the public that we do have a leash law. You have to yeah. control your dog. And if your dog bites someone or yeah. injures you're well, I did try to that. say it earlier. Maybe it wasn't clear enough, yeah. but we do need to keep our dogs. I think you have to <laughs> keep I know you keep do say it. Yep, you have to keep the yeah. dogs leashed and obedient and within their fencing and that's yeah. for your protection as much as for everybody else's and so important. Okay. 
absolutely. Because yeah. nasty things can happen to people. And then absolutely, and even and even by accident, you yeah. know, like one of the reports from the dog control officer was a golden retriever charged somebody's toddler at a at a park. You know, I mean. Mm. Who knows, you know, golden retrievers are very friendly, but you can see how that would be scary right. for people, you know. I mean, so even if your dog isn't, you know, malicious, it's still, you know, it's a, a public does, issue. Is the dog park still operating? It does still operate, although we are um, kind of in discussion with Rhinebeck because I think they're not totally happy with how it is right now. It's just kind of difficult to monitor, so um, we'll see. We'll have an update soon, I think, on whether it's going to continue. But it does still exist. There is a dog park. Maybe people don't know. There's a dog park over by Old Stone Church Stone Road, Church, right? Yeah. Or Stone Church Road yep. that, that we share with Rhinebeck. Yep. You, need you to can get, get permits permit. through Sue McCann, right? Uh, no, actually, you get the permit in Rhinebeck. In Rhinebeck, <coughs> okay. Me. I have the application. For <coughs> so yeah, Sue has the no. application and then the permits through Rhinebeck. Okay. And they have to have a valid dog license. Right. And you should be licensing your dog every year. Too, right? Oh, yeah. that's a valid that, that, dog license. Yeah. To get a license, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, that's all I have. If, if uh, no one has anything else, I'd like to make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss the hiring of a particular individual. Is there second. a second? Okay. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all for watching.